just a little bit of information about Solar United Neighbors for those who are unfamiliar with our work. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and we work with and for solar advocates, owners, and supporters. Um, and we help people join together, go solar, and fight for their energy rights. So we really believe this is a mutually reinforcing cycle that requires both a robust solar market as well as informed and active sol uh, energy consumers and advocates. Um, and just a little bit of background information about our organization. Back in 2007, our now executive director, Anya Schoolman, fielded a request from her son and his best friend. Um, and they wanted, they wanted their parents to put solar panels on the roof of their home. And this was back in 2007 in Washington, DC. And it was a relatively complicated process. There wasn't a ton of consumer facing information. And so um, our now executive director said, you know what, if we are going to figure out how to do this, we're gonna bring the whole neighborhood with us. And that's how they founded the Mount Pleasant Solar Cooperative. And from our humble beginnings, we have now become a national 501c3 nonprofit with um, field with field directors and state-based programs in about a dozen different states. And as you can see from this map, um, Texas is one of our state-based programs and one of our newer state-based programs. And we're really happy to have you all here today to talk about some, some Texas buyback plans. So I said that we help people uh, join together, go solar, and fight for their energy rights. And two of the ways that we do this are through our solar co-op bulk purchase programs. We actually have two solar co-ops open in the greater Houston area to members, to new members. And our co-ops bring people into a group to go solar together. So we provide unbiased installer neutral support through each stage of the process and co-op members leverage their numbers to get a great group rate on installations. And this process usually takes about six to eight months. Um, we also offer individual memberships um, and our individual memberships include support from our vendor neutral Go Solar team and will help you choose uh, an installer by providing three detailed pr proposal reviews. Some other, so besides our co-ops and our individual membership, we also provide a host of uh, resources and support for solar owners and supporters and advocates. Um, and what we'll be diving into a little bit uh, later in the presentation are new offerings for Texas solar owners. But just to get a flavor of some of the stuff that's out there, we have guides um, like an HOA action guide and a guide to selling your solar home um, and a lot of great network support through our listservs and Facebook groups. So um, we'll be diving right into this presentation on buyback plans in Texas. Um, I'm going to start off with some uh, basic overview of um, energy production and consumption within the retail choice marketplace of Texas. Um, and then I'm going to hand it over to Corey to give an overview of available buyback plans from retail electricity providers. And then I'll close it off uh, and tell you all, all about our new customized reports to help you save money. So um, just so we have a bit of grounding in what we're talking about with a grid tied residential solar system, here is a diagram of um, a solar system that is grid tied. So you have these, uh, you have point one, the solar panels that are attached to your roof and provide electricity in the form of direct current electricity, which then goes to your inverter, which inverts this direct current electricity to alternating current electricity, flows through your electrical panel and is used uh, within your home by any load that you have there before flowing out through your utility meter and onto the grid to be used by neighbors. So if you have, um, so to put this, 
in uh, a little bit different way, your daily solar production is not always going to match up with your home's energy consumption patterns. Um, so to understand how a standard residential solar system is interacting with the grid, let's consider that most homes are going to have an energy uh, demand spike in the morning and then another one in the evening, whereas your solar production is going to follow uh, the sun. And while this uh, chart on the right, this graph on the right is an approximation and really your monthly uh, production is going to vary a little bit more. Um, the point is to demonstrate that you will at some point, generally speaking, have some excess that is sent to the grid. Um, and one of the questions that I get very frequently uh, within Texas is, you know, what happens when your excess generation is sent to the grid? How are you credited for that? Um, and how does that interact with your return on investment? How much is it going to cost? When am I going to see a return on my investment? Um, and how am I going to get credited for excess generation? Which leads us into this policy concept called net metering. Um, so I like to think of um, net metering as rollover minutes on a cell phone. So when you are uh, generating more solar than your home is consuming, uh, that excess generation goes on to the grid and you receive a credit on your utility bill. This is as an abstract policy concept. And then when you are consuming more electricity than your system is producing, you're then buying electricity. So um, by law, utilities must account for the bi-directional flow of electricity, but how you are credited for excess generation is set on a state-by-state -state level. And then as I'm sure many of you are aware, Texas does not have a statewide net metering policy. So in the absence of a statewide net metering policy, um, some retail electricity providers offer an approximation of net metering. Um, true net metering, we generally refer to as a one-to-one -one credit. So you are receiving the full rate for excess, uh, for your excess generation as you are when you're buying it. Um, and buyback plans generally have, um, some of them are very similar to net metering and some of them offer different rates. So we're gonna get into that next. Uh, so solar buyback plans um, are an approximation in, of net metering and that they allow uh, retail electricity providers to have this offering um, where you can earn credit for excess generation. And they are, the offerings are going to be a little bit different. So some reps have the net metering like credits, um, some have less than the um, full retail rate some have offer less than a one to one credit, but the rates will be a little bit cheaper um, and some charge at a, a real time wholesale base. And so we're going to get into what each of those means in just a little bit. Um, it's also worth noting that, you know, many retail electricity, electricity providers out there do not offer solar buyback plans. Um, and the rates change periodically, but we're going to be talking about some of the, the trends that we have observed. Um, and this image right here is a sample uh, custom report. Again, we'll go into that in a bit more detail. And you can see that this report is comparing buyback plans from uh, Reliant, Green Mountain Energy, Gritty, Chariot, and MP2. So to summarize, um, there is no one single buyback plan that is best for you and your, your best option may depend on your relative system size and usage profile. Whoops. So now I'm going to turn it over to Corey uh, for an overview of uh, available buyback plans. Hello everybody, I'm Corey Ramson. I'm our uh, VP for Go Solar Programs at Solar United Neighbors, which really means that we just support uh, our field staff like Hannah all over the country, um, helping people go solar and whatever support is necessary. So it might be a co-op, it might be something like this. Um, but uh, what I'm gonna be doing in this next section is going over the analysis that uh, um, Texas Power Guide and we did to give you an idea of what 
buyback plan uh, look like for different types of usage. And I wanted to start off, actually, somebody had asked a question uh, here. It looks like Vincent's answering it, but um, just for folks that haven't seen that, part of what is important for this conversation is, is uh, when you're using energy and when you're producing energy, right? So the way that your solar is oriented and when it's producing most, whether it's facing south, east, or west, is gonna be directly related to when you're using that energy and whether you're exporting electricity to the grid and then how you're compensated for it. So we'll, we'll kind of go over that a little bit more as we go. Um, can you go on to the next slide for me, Hannah? And I will say up front here, this is the first time we've ever done this type of uh, webinar. So you might see me glance down to look at my notes. Just wanna make sure we're covering all the info. Some of these we sort of do on autopilot. This is not one of them. So uh, thanks everybody for, for attending. Um, first, a little bit about our method. What we have done really is model all of the buyback plans in the Centerport service area. We expect that if the results are gonna be very similar for Encore, but we just wanna make sure people understand that. And in, as part of this process through this analysis that we did with Texas Power Guide, we're assuming a 15 minute interval for based on an average load profile. So you heard me, you know, and Hannah also mentioned earlier, when you use electricity and when you're producing it matters. In order for us to do this analysis, we have to make some assumptions. So we're just using an average load profile and we're shaping it across uh, the whole year for those 15 minute intervals to, to get this analysis. Uh, and then we took that and we uh, ranked the plans based on that and um, based on a relative system size for production, for solar production. So uh, once again, when you, where your system is, which way it's facing, how big it is, all these things impact what the economics look like for you, which is why this custom report we're gonna talk about later is uh, we think is a really helpful addition to this, uh, to this conversation. Next slide. Um, this is probably not news to people, but we wanna just sort of set a baseline here as far as the types of plans. This is not every type of plan in the market. These are some of the major ones you'll see. The, the one that Hannah referenced earlier, the one-to-one -one plan is just, as, just like it sounds, for every uh, kilowatt hour you produce, you get the same credit uh, that you, for the same amount that you would have paid to buy that electricity. So if you're paying 14 cents a kilowatt hour and then you produce one of those kilowatt hours from solar and it goes back through your meter and is measured as export, you'll get that credit as well. That's a one-to-one -one plan. There's variations of this where you might pay you know, 12 cents, but you might only get credited 10 cents. So that's gonna vary by provider. Uh, and that's another sort of a subcategory there. The second type is real, real time wholesale pricing plan. So what do we mean by this? Um, there are plans on the market where when you are um, using electricity, the time of day depends uh, on how that electricity is valued. And it's based on the markets, the wholesale markets that are, uh, that are in effect in Texas. So it's very closely aligned with the cost of electricity to the electricity sector uh, at that moment. And those are gonna go up and down at, uh, at relatively short intervals. So if you're exporting a piece of uh, a kilowatt hour through your meter at that moment from solar, and that electricity is valued at 10 cents, you're gonna get that 10 cent credit. But if it's only valued at three cents, that's the credit you're gonna get. And that's gonna happen over and over again throughout the year. Uh, and then the last one is no buyback. These are standard plans, just like you said, like it, like it sounds, where you're not being credited for your export, but the cost of electricity you pay for uh, that you're importing uh, might be lower than some of these other plans or we might be lower than a one-to-one -one plan. So that is that cost um, is relevant for when you're producing electricity versus when you are uh, consuming it. Next slide. You saw a, a slightly smaller version of this, but this is just a table example of what we're doing when we're analyzing these, uh, your actual electricity consumption and production in 15 minute intervals against all the plans that are available there. So Texas Power Diet's doing, a, doing that heavy lifting for you to compile all the information about what those plans look like, what the compensation looks like for exported energy, and then matching it up against, the, against your actual curve to figure out whether or not, uh, when, how you're gonna be compensated at different times. So for this particular person, this one-to-one -one plan from Green Mountain Energy happens to be the best one. Uh, that may be different for, for somebody else's electricity usages. I want to make uh, clear for this as, a, as well, we're not supporting any particular plan. What we're doing is just looking at all the ones out there and then applying it to your electricity production and consumption and figuring out which one has the most value. And you can see there's also some variation in length of term. So some of these are going to be 12 month plans. Some of them might be 24. Uh, the import rate here that you're looking at is what you are getting credited when you um, are pulling that electricity in from the grid 
and then your export credit is what you're getting compensated on the other way around. So you can see those vary. Um, one thing about, uh, I'm not sure if we defined it on the bottom here, but TDU is obviously your, is your distribution utility. So if there are any charges there, sometimes those plans are gonna have a export credit in addition to whatever your credits are from the, from the TDU. At the end of the day, that bottom blue bar is really what we're looking at. We're trying to figure out what your net bill is gonna be using this plan based on your actual electricity production and your electricity consumption. So let's go on to the next slide. What you're looking at here are those three plan types we talked about, and we're putting them against that average load profile that uh, I mentioned earlier, and an average system size, so a specific array we're using, and that's gonna vary again based on where yours is, but we have to make some assumptions here. And then we're comparing it against two different pre-solar cost of electricity. That 9.5 cent one is what we think is roughly the low, a low price that you could get for a pretty standard plan, you know, not one that has a lot of variations, but one that's sort of a fixed rate, that that's, uh, that is a price that's, that's possible if you're just choosing a different plan. The 12 cent rate is the one that's more close to the average of what people are actually paying across these markets from, from our research. And so we thought it was important to compare both of them. The reason that's relevant is because when you put solar into that mix uh, and you might change your plan, that difference between what you were paying and what you're paying on that new plan, that buyback plan, has a lot to do with the economics. A little bit about the labeling here too. If you look at um, export as a percentage of import, this feels a little strange, to, might feel a little strange to some people, but what we're really talking about here is um, if you, let's say you're, ex you're importing, so you're using, um, pulling electricity in a thousand kilowatt hours a month. What this is saying is that in, just for example, if you export 400 kilowatt hours a month, in other words, you send 400 kilowatt hours back through your meter, that would be 40% export as a percentage of import. And that's re the, re the reason we're doing it this, that this way and uh, is because that is really the gauge of how much we're pulling in and getting charged and how much we're exporting and getting credited for. It's it's similar to what percentage of your solar would cover your whole energy usage for the year, but it's not exactly the same because every day and every um, uh, week and every month, every minute of the day, you're exporting and importing. And that overlap of what you pull in versus what you send out matters in terms of how you're compensated. So this is a it's slightly different. It can be a little confusing, but we just want to make sure that folks are clear on, on what that is. Um, if you look on, I'm going to dig into each one of these on the next slide, so I'm not going to spend too much more time here, but I will say that um, one of the things that we've seen is in this analysis that some of these new entrants for real-time wholesale buyback can have, in certain cases, a pretty big impact, um, especially if you're able to adjust when you use electricity. I'm going to pause there just for a second, see if there's any questions. Any Vincent or Hannah, anybody have questions that we need to address here? All right, well, let's go on to the next one. First up, no buyback. Pretty clear here, and if you're looking at this, um, at this graph, what we're really saying with this no, buy, my, no buyback is that you are producing, this is a rel these are gonna be relatively small systems to your total percentage of electricity you're using, and you're essentially keeping all that electricity in your home. You're not sending hardly any of it back to the grid because as soon as you produce those, electron, the, those kilowatt hours from your inverter on your array, it's going to your uh, main electric panel and you're using it right on the spot. So it never needs to be credited and you're not actually uh, exporting that much electricity. And as a result, these plans that sometimes might have a lower cost per kilowatt hour, but don't credit you for how much electricity you're exporting can have uh, a positive effect. <clears throat> now for most folks who have enough roof space and are really interested in solar, you're probably gonna try to create a system that's larger and covers more of your electricity usage, which we totally support. Um, but this is an important dynamic for smaller systems. So this might be particularly relevant for um, systems that have, for homes that have relatively small roof space, don't have a lot of room for a system, uh, but they still wanna do something, they wanna produce clean energy, this, this type of plan might have the, the best impact for you. Next slide. Real-time wholesale. Really clear here that um, what we're saying with this is that in order for these, um, for this impact to, to be relevant for you is that you, we'll need to be able to adjust your demand to some degree, right? So we are, what we're saying here is that for some basic ability to adjust when you use electricity, that might be a programmable thermostat, 
It might be uh, um, some other basic demand response, which means you're sort of saying when you choose to use electricity. If you have some control over that, pricing your uh, electricity on real-time wholesale rates and getting credited for it, not only when it's low, but also when that value is high, which sometimes is during the daytime, uh, that could have a, a, a pretty good impact on your, on your economics. So we'd like to say here, this, it comes with potential for high value, but it also comes with some risk. And that means that you, your usage patterns when you use electricity versus when you produce it do impact this, um, this analysis. So it's important to keep that in mind. One other thing that's important for this is that uh, you, um, when we do this analysis for you, if you, descend, if you uh, are, we run a report on your 15 minute usage data, um, interval data, we're gonna look at that information backward facing, right? So we're assuming your electricity usage is gonna be the same. And we also have to make some assumptions about some of the previous costs for that real-time wholesale rate. So I just wanna be clear here, some, a lot of upside, but it also means that you know, there's, some, there's some uncertainty there. Uh, but we thought that was a, kind of a, a pretty interesting result from some of this analysis that Texas Power Guide did. Next slide. Last uh, but not least, your one-to-one -one energy buyback. So again, you're getting credited the full value of what you pay when you export. Um, this should be no surprise based on what we've talked to up until now, is that when you are exporting that electricity, you have, this is uh, somewhat of a safer option for people. However, you have to keep in mind that you're probably gonna be paying more for that electricity as well. So as you can see from the graph, the more ex electricity you're exporting and getting credited at that same rate, the more your economics are gonna start to work out. If you're hardly exporting any electricity to the grid and you're keeping it all to yourself, in other words, you have a relatively small system in comparison to your total electricity usage, you may end up having uh, economics that don't work so well for this type of, of plan because you're paying more for the electricity, but you're not actually getting the benefit of getting those credited, right? You could go out and find a plan that had a lower cost in that scenario. So that's why you see that slope come down, whereas when you start to export more electricity, uh, you need to get credited for it relative to uh, what you would have paid and the economics start to, to improve tremendously. So for folks who are thinking about um, trying to generate 100% of their electricity, this is certainly one of the safer options, but we just want folks to be aware about that relationship between when you're sending electricity out versus when you're using it. Looks like we have a question here. Let me pause for just a minute while I read this. Okay, so um, Blake's asking a question specifically about the Reliant plan and the fact that they wouldn't get, you wouldn't get credited for the electricity under their plan for the first month. This analysis does not, uh, I don't believe goes into that much detail, but I would actually um, defer to Fred Enders from Texas Power Guide because ultimately it's his tools that are doing that analysis as to whether we take that into account. Um, yeah, no, so I, I, I had never heard uh, that detail before or seen it in print, but uh, yeah, it does not include that uh, currently. So I can look into that and incorporate that in the future. Super, thanks Fred. Uh, and as you can see from these questions and from the fact here, this is uh, this type of stuff is um, is relatively new and is not widely available, right? So any feedback that people have about this, we'd really like to hear it. We ultimately want to make sure that solar existing solar owners, and that's what we're talking about here, people who have had solar for a year where they have that data, um, that they get the best information to make a good choice. We also, and this is for the future, we would very much like to provide this kind of report, which we're going to talk about in a minute and more detail to people who are thinking about going solar. There's a couple extra details about how to do that in a way that is uh, accurate for somebody who hasn't put solar on their roof yet, but we feel that's a really important part of the market as well, and we're gonna be working on that too. Any other questions here, or I, maybe I'll just pause, Fred. Uh, do you have any uh, other comments on any of those slides, Fred, that uh, I didn't cover that you'd like to state before we go, go forward? Uh, no, I think you covered it pretty well there. Great. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Hannah to talk about the plans themselves. Great, thanks, Corey. Um, and as I mentioned briefly before, um, we are offering customized reports uh, with a partnership of Texas Power Guide. Um, and these reports will be most accurate if you are an existing solar owner with a year's worth of data. Um, and the process for getting these reports is to become a member of Solar United Neighbors as a solar owner level. Um, and then you are going to visit Texas Power Guide site and request a report. And 
um, I'm just going to go to the next slide because it'll show what that looks like. So it will require your name and email address, uh, street address, zip code, your solar array size, your retail electricity provider, um, and then any information, if you have it, your, um, your uh, meter number, and, uh, and that's how Fred will be able to provide you with a customized report based on your usage and consumption patterns. Um, and solar production patterns. And uh, to become a solar owner member, Vincent will be sharing some links into the chat, but you just have to sign up on our website. Again, it's a, it's a $55 per year uh, membership. We are offering a special that we will roll out if you stick around with us to the end of this presentation. Um, we'll, be, we'll be rolling out some giveaways, but this is how you become a member. And then what you get from your customized report is a mapping of your annual energy usage and solar production. It will look something like this. Um, as well as some custom recommendations for a solar buyback plan that would benefit you most based on your consumption patterns um, and your production patterns. Um, so to learn more about our work overall, uh, we do have our Texas webpage on our website. So it's solarunitedneighbors.org slash Texas. As I mentioned, um, we do have two open solar co-ops that are in the greater Houston area. So if this is your first time hearing about Solar United Neighbors and you're interested in going solar yourself and you want to go solar with a group, um, we do have two groups in the greater Greater Houston area that are um, accepting new members through the end of July and our co-ops are always cost and commitment free to join. Uh, and then of course we have a listserv and Facebook groups. Um, whoa! And I think I just lost my slides. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then as a token of our thanks, um, we are providing uh, everyone who stuck around with us to the end with a free one-year Texas Solar Owner membership if you enter this coupon code. So we mentioned it's a $55 value. Um, and our Solar Owner membership includes a customized retail plan report um, like I just showed you. Uh, and the code expires 8, uh, August 1st of this year. So please do take advantage of that. We are really interested in getting your feedback on the customized reports. Um, I will probably uh, hand it back over to Corey and Fred to talk a little bit more about um, what type of feedback we're looking for and how this can be useful for uh, potential and existing solar owners. Um, but please do send us your questions and feedback because we would like to make these reports as useful as possible. Um, and Corey, are, Corey, is there anything else that you would like to mention about the memberships? Um, I think you covered most of it. I just want to thank, fo thank folks and hope you'll take the opportunity to um, utilize the service. It's something that we feel is a, a, a really helpful contribution to the solar market in Texas, and we'd like to make sure that it matches and actually meets people's needs. 